Thank you so much, Carlos, for that uh, very warm welcome. Uh, I feel a little bad that I'm doing this presentation in English. Um, Spanish is actually a language I aspire to learn my whole life. But I think there was a pivotal moment in high school where I had the choice between computer science and basic. I ended up choosing computer science, sadly. So I apologize, I have to do my presentation in English. I also like to say that as a CEO, writing a book, it's all, almost a little um, contrived. I, I never actually aspired to write a book. It was never on my bucket list. It was, not, it was not something I wanted to do. But I've been working with external data uh, for soon 20 years. And I've seen how powerful external data is. And I also, on the other hand, seen how little it has been utilized by our clients. And for that reason, I was thinking that somebody surely will write a book about, about this, because I fundamentally believe that this is going to transform the way we run and govern our businesses. But nobody wrote that book, and because of that, I decided in the end, maybe I should write the book instead. So I will start my book, my presentation with three propositions. And during my presentation, I hope that you will get a deeper understanding why I believe these propositions is going to shape your companies and the decision making going forward. The first proposition is that decision making needs to adjust to a new digital reality. The world has changed in a very dramatic way. And the argument I have is that decision making has not been adjusted accordingly. The second proposition is that because of the needs to mine all this data, there's an entire new software category that's about to emerge. And it's really important to understand that this is a tool that I believe all of you will have, that all of you will rely on when you make decisions going forward. And I actually believe that, I understand all of you, many of you are in marketing, I believe that you have a particular role to play in bringing these kind of tools, bringing this kind of software into the company, and helping the others, to educate the others in the executive teams and so on, the value or insight that can be acquired through this new software category. But deeply and fundamentally, I think the world we live in today are so different. And machine learning, with all this new data, in a deep and profound way, will change the way we run companies and then the way we govern companies. It will even change the lens with which you look at your own company. So by the end of this presentation, I hope that you have a better appreciation for all of these things. So before I dive into the actual material, I would like to give you a very quick background on Meltwater. And the reason for that is that you can get to understand the vantage point from which we have seen the world, on which we have been working, and why we come to the conclusions that we have. So Melfoder is a headquarters in San Francisco. We started in Norway in 2001. We were two guys on a coffee machine, and we started the business with $15,000. And since then, we have bootstrapped the business. In 2005, we went to San Francisco, and has been headquartered in San Francisco since. And we have more than 50 offices across the world, and we serve more than 30,000 corporate clients. And fundamentally, what we do is that we identify and analyze leading performers indicators. When we mine all this external data, what we discovered is that we really help companies, our clients, to understand what is going to come in the future. Your brand has a direct implication for your future performance. If your brand is good, it will attract more clients. If your customers are talking negatively about you, it will deter clients. Client satisfaction overall is, of course, a huge factor determining your future performance. Your share of voice, your relative strength to your competitors, what competitors are doing, general competitive intelligence and industry trends are all leading indicators. And by that, I mean that if you understand those, you will be in better position to understand how your business is going to do in the future. 
And these leading indicators are all mined through a very sophisticated, uh, sophisticated analytics engine powered with AI and machine learning, and in combing through all the news, all the social media, and a, a massive amount of data. Every day, we do more than 2 trillion searches on behalf of our clients. And we have more than 30,000 clients. We have, of course, big brands, and then so on. And we also have organizations, the World Bank, the European Union, uh, one of my favorites is the Vatican. So my joke is that we have everyone from Coca-Cola to the Pope in Rome. And the reason why we have such a varied client base is that information is important for everyone. Information is critical for decision making in any industry. It doesn't matter if you're B2C, B2B, even organizations and, and, and um, yeah. The, the, the Vatican needs information to make good decisions. But what we see is a fundamental shift. So I'm sure all of you guys aspire to be data-driven. I'm sure all of you guys put a lot of effort to understand your data and to be on top of your data. But mostly the focus so far has been on your internal data, your internal metrics. And the weakness with internal data is that they're lagging data. When you see the results from your internal systems, being sales, being cash flow, being churn, these are all lagging data. They are the result of things that took place in the past. One of the arguably the biggest blind spot in your decision making today is all the external data. I have not met a CEO, I have not met an executive that says, yes, external data, we are completely on top of. We are rigorous, we are thoughtful, we have, we have nailed that. Most people feel, when I talk about this uh, opportunity, so, oh yeah, we are too ad hoc. It's too um, random what information we get our hands on and which information we don't get our hands on. And the powerful thing with external data is, of course, that they're leading indicators for everything that's going to happen. And if you take one step back and think about how the world has been transformed over the last 20 years, Netscape came in 1995, and since then, the world has moved online. Today, we cannot imagine a day where we're not browsing on the web you cannot imagine a day that we don't use internet for a variety of things. So in the last 20 years, internet has in a deep and profound way transformed most businesses, most industries, and both, most business models. So for example, banking. When I grew up, banking was you went to a building, and there you deposit money or withdrew money. Today you do banking on your mobile phone. And you do it at any time of the day. Shopping used to be a place that you went to. Shopping malls all over the world is deteriorating because shopping is also done online. Media, news, completely transformed. Many newspapers doesn't exist anymore. And now we have social media. And newspaper is often the last place you actually read news today because it surfaced in social a long time before. And you can go one industry after another. They have all been changed in a profound way. The way we buy music today. It used to be CDs. Went to a store, listened to CDs or LPs. Now you stream the world's aggregated music uh, $9 per month. The joke today is that the biggest hotel in the world, Airbnb, has no hotels. The biggest taxi company in the world, Uber, has no taxis. And the biggest media company in the world, Facebook, doesn't have any media, doesn't produce any content. So the world has changed. But isn't it interesting that decision making has been surprisingly unaffected? 
So the world has changed dramatically in the last 20 years, but the way we do decisions are very much the same. We pour over internal sales, sales numbers, we pour over the reports from our internal data systems, and today we try to be more rigorous than in the past, meaning we are more thoughtful about the numbers. We break them down even further. But the argument I will make is that there's a ceiling, how much, ceiling to how much insight you can extract from internal data, because it's only about the past. If you really want to add more data, you need to incorporate external data. And fundamentally, the first argument I will make is that decision making has not caught up in a new digital reality. Today, Every one of us leaves lots of breadcrumbs. Maybe somebody here tweeted they were on the conference today. Uh, maybe yesterday you met somebody for dinner. You were taking a photo of your meal, posted on Instagram. Today, every person shares about 12 items per week. Analyzing those breadcrumbs, you can understand where you go on vacation, who you spend time with, and uh, lots of other dimensions that are super interesting for all your marketing people. But companies also leave digital breadcrumbs. Right before I wrote this book, I discovered that there was a blog that had found out that Apple had just pulled all the recruiters. And this was just before a quarterly financial report. And everyone was a little worried about this uh, financial report. And when I saw that they stopped hiring, of course, that made people even more worried. And rightfully so, when the financial numbers came, it wiped $58 billion of market cap of Apple. And the reason for that was that the revenue had dropped for the first quarter in seven years. But all of that, were, there were signs. If those who understood how to analyze online breadcrumbs could see that things were not going as well with Apple as they should. And talking with BMW, oh, sorry, and $58 billion, that's a lot of money. But it's, but it's hard to kind of gauge. The $58 billion is basically the market cap of BMW, which I spent 150 years to, to uh, aggregate. But speaking of the BMW, one data type that I find really interesting is all the advertising spend. So in this time, time, you can look at the company's advertisement spend. You can estimate an advertiser spend by product, by country, and you can track it over time. And you can compare it with uh, your own spend, for example. So say if you work for BMW, then you can see how much is Tesla, BMW, Audi, and Mercedes spending per region. Maybe even by, and you can drill down further down to each car. And of course, that's very, very interesting. And if you, if you suddenly see that Mercedes should double their marketing in the French market, maybe you want to know that right when that happens, instead of seeing results coming later, um, sales results being weaker later. And as you maybe see, Tesla, interesting enough, has zero marketing. They rely entirely on Elon Musk's ability to attract PR. So far, that has been very, very positive. But now, lately, maybe that has started to be a little more shaky. The point I want to get across is that external data is a treasure trove of valuable insights. If you know where to look, if you know what information to, to analyze, you will learn incredible amount of intelligence about your entire competitive landscape, clients, as well as the overall market is developing. And fundamentally, what you're talking about, if you go back to a business class, is actually Porter's five forces we try to understand. External data shows you information about all your externalities. And if you analyze those breadcrumbs, you can understand how all those external forces impact you and your business. And if you do that, you're fundamentally est estimating Porter's five forces. And if you can do that, you will always make better decisions than people that only look at the internal data. So fundamentally, what that leads me to is that decision-making will change. And we argue that decision-making will change from introvert to extrovert. 
The traditional paradigm is that you look at your internal data. The data you're looking at is about yourself. It's operational data, cash flow, churn, sales, etc. The analytics is lagging. It's based on historic results. And the cadence is typically monthly, monthly and quarterly. And the argument we, we are making is that because you're looking at historic data, the way we do make this decision today is actually reactive. But if you embrace external data, the information you're analyzing now is not about yourself anymore. It's about everything around you. It's about your competitors. It's about your customers. It's about your environment, competitive landscape. And the analytics is leading indicators. As soon as something happens, you will be notified. We talked about Mercedes. Maybe they double down, uh, double down in marketing in a particular market. You want to know that as it happened, instead of seeing soft results in the future. So that's why you want to analyze it in real time. So the mode of operation, we will argue, is therefore that you are more proactive in your decision making. So outside insight is a new software category. Because there's so much data that needs to be analyzed, you need strong technology to help you analyze this. And machine learning is a critical element in this new software. And this software will help you and aid decision making. In real time, it will help you understand opportunities as well as threat. And this will be at every layer in the organization. And I'm particularly excited about machine learning entering the boardroom. And I think the boardroom are often a pretty insular type of team. But it's incredibly important for a boardroom to see in real time how well your company, benchmark with the others, are doing in real time. And in that way, they can see threats and opportunities and incorporate that in the decision making. Boardrooms are often given almost a hostage to the management reports that is presented by the management. But now they have external third party data that, that can corroborate or not corroborate the reports by the management. Outside insight will, in the long run, transform decision making into scenario analysis and game theory. Not only will this software provide these insights, they will also automatically spin up scenarios. They will automatically analyze and score and weigh different options and help and guide you making the decision uh, in the end. And some people might be worried that the machines are coming, AI is coming and replacing everyone. And the obvious question is, will they replace leaders? Will they replace management? I happen to believe that that will not be the case. Machines are very good at a lot of things. But there will always be room for the human because of judgment, because of ethical uh, calls. And Technology will then go hand in hand with leadership. And technology, in the same way that GPS can help you understand exactly where you are and understand exactly where you need to go. And maybe there's a mountain in front of you. Then the human will decide whether you go straight up that mountain or whether you should go around and that way get to point B in the most effective way. And that is a role or the human, that's the role for judgment. Thank you so much.